let us get started with approval of the November minutes. Um, I hope people have read the November minutes. Would anybody like to make a motion to approve or make suggestions for corrections? I move we approve the minutes as sent. Second. I'll second. And let's take a vote. I say yes. Melissa, you already said yes. Bev? Yes. Ace? Can you hear me? Um, Richard? Yes. Yes. Hannah? Uh, abstain, I wasn't here. Okay. I wasn't All there right. either. I think that, well, I guess the minutes have been approved, right, Keith? I mean, we don't have a full quorum for the minutes, but. Uh, Gwen has joined since she started the meeting as well. Right. Hi, Gwen. Gwen, I don't know if you read the minutes, but you weren't here last time. So chances are you would probably yes. abstain, right? I would have to abstain. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think with the people who voted here, we approved the minutes. Let's just say that that was done. Minutes approved. Okay, so I want to go to you, Gwen. First of all, welcome. We haven't seen you in a while. And um, it's good you. to have you back. And I Thanks. see some somebody else is visiting here um, besides Laura. Jara Smith, is that right? Okay, well, maybe that person will say something soon. Um, you're having trouble unmuting yourself. Okay. Well, we will, we will know when you have, I think. Anyway, hopefully you will. Um, okay. So, um, mostly what we're going to do today is, um, review the plans that we started talking about last week. Um, in which we were, Ace, I think you suggested this, um, to send the mayor a letter, um, sort of letting her know where we're at and inviting her to our next meeting, especially to talk about the housing trust fund. I sent around a very rough draft of a letter. I have no ego involved in that letter. I just wanted to start with something. And I want to talk now about what what uh, changes people want to see or what your thoughts are in general about that. Ace? Um, so overall, I don't have any problems with the letter except in the uh, third paragraph talking about home rule petitions um, because one of the facts is not accurate. Um, the uh, transfer fee for properties uh is the thing that's going through the legislature is not a home rule petition and we to my knowledge have not authored any proposals we've talked about a number of different ones but to my knowledge we haven't come up with a cohesive one with uh you know what we want what our ideas are for the city specifically and to my knowledge it, nothing like that has gone through city council either. Um, if if I'm incorrect about this, please let me know. Uh, but as as far as I know, um, you know the whole the the law that's going through the legislature isn't a home rule petition and isn't from us. Okay. Um. I'm just looking carefully to see if anybody has any other comments. Um, well, that could have been incorrectly stated. What I was thinking was on these, um, what started off as home rule petitions, we consulted Alan Seewald, who's the attorney for um, the city of Northampton. He wrote it up in legalese language. Um, so I'm not totally familiar with the process and it may be incorrect what I said there, it could be better to say advocate. I'm not sure. Yeah. So what we did for the transfer fee bill was 
unquestionably a home rule petition that we authored that went through the city council, was approved by the city council, was approved by the mayor, and is a home rule petition sitting in the legislature. Yeah. The transfer fees was what is in the legislature was not authored by us and is not a home rule petition. It is something that is being proposed as state law for any municipality that wants to uh, say, yes, we want to do this, basically. Um, so I I think we should definitely tell the mayor, hey, there's this bill that's going through the legislature that, you know, this information is correct for. Um, but to say that it's a home rule petition and to say that it's author we authored it, it, we shouldn't say that because it's incorrect. Okay. So let me just step back a minute and see if other people have um, ideas or thoughts about how to about the letter to the mayor. Gwen? I'm just thinking um, where that is not quite accurate, what was written there. What we could say is that we, we could be interested in creating a home rule petition um, to make sure that but then we don't know if there would be restrictions on the money that comes in from that by the state or, um, you know, I don't know, or just omit that completely. Um, and then my other yeah. thought is that I, I think we could maybe just clean up the paragraph about um, the municipal affordable housing trust just to make it more concise and to the point. But like overall, I, I think it looks good. I mean, um, one of the one of the things that I could do per your suggestion, Gwen, and yours, Ace, is that we, we could um, just pick a couple of people tonight that I share the letter with so that people can make corrections and or make changes. I mean, that's going to be a lot. Uh, that's going to be more of a uh, streamlined so, experience. Uh, I'm not sure if we can do that for open meeting rule reasons um if if we were to talk about it in meeting and live edit it here i think we could do that um mm -hmm. which might also be faster mm -hmm. okay well let's do that i, I agree with that all right um so we're talking about paragraph three so let's change that up. Um, Bev has her hand up. Bev, thanks. I'm sorry, I, I, if we're gonna edit as a group, then we should keep going with that relative to three. Uh, I don't know that, I'll defer to Ace that this is not something we could do offline. I'm a, a little anxious about group editing, but we'll we'll see what we can do. But my larger question, and I was not at the last meeting where it was decided to do this invitation in the first place, uh, was um, whether we want to be more clear in the letter or just in the meeting about the things we've been talking about doing and some of the debates we've been having and concerns we've been having, blah, blah, blah. So if the letter is just to invite her to a meeting and appetize her with a few of the topics, I think we'd be succinct and maybe even, you know, list them. Um, if the point is to update her in the letter about what we have thought about and done today, then I think we should say more about the thinking behind the trust in mm -hmm. our view that despite <laughs> opinions to the contrary, um, funding at the right time in the right amount for affordable housing is a missing piece in the puzzle. Uh, we'd like to discuss that further with her. So I I know that's a mouthful, but can somebody the, the per, maybe go back? What's the purpose of the letter? Is it to an extend an invitation or to provide an update or both? Um, the purpose of the letter was to is to extend an invitation, right? And to and to put enough information in it to pique her interest in coming to talk with us once again about this subject. And yes, I think some of those things do need to be added. Do you wanna 
I mean, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do group editing tonight, because unless you say this has to be changed in this way, I'm going to come out of this kind of like scratching my head. Do you know what I mean? Well, so, Keith, can you help here in terms of what we can and cannot do? Because we did have a subcommittee meeting um, for the sole purpose of drilling down a bit on next stop steps, uh, particularly around the trust. But I think what we concluded is that we want to host, perhaps in partnership with other organizations within Northampton and perhaps outside of Northampton, um, a meeting or a series of meetings with uh, interested parties, developers, uh, and others who are active on the ground to try and really hone in on the barriers to developing more affordable housing. Um, and I got to believe she would be interested in that topic. It's not, um, you know, articulated in the letter. And I thought perhaps because you were just going to raise it when, when, and if you get a meeting. Mm -hmm. So uh, bundling all that stuff together, should we have a subcommittee, people who have been directly involved, as ACE has, as Gwen has, um, in specific things that have been done to date, um, to help work on the language in the letter, get it right? Um, so and I think, and then yes, and, and I think then that then the other part of the question for you, Keith, is um, can we do that? I mean, could we do that? with a small group of us sharing the letter and contributing to it? That is the question. Yes, uh, so two things. A small group that is under quorum is totally fine. So a two or three people is probably enough to you know, get it ashed out. And then I think it does make sense. You know, The purpose of the letter is an invitation, but enough context to know what she's preparing coming for. Right. Um, and you know, she's had this conversation before, or this is kind of maybe a continuation. Um, so kind of referring back to what we talked about, I think that's totally fine. And, you know, we don't need to give all, all the details because we're going to want, you know, have a conversation with her. And right. Then, um, yeah. Okay. So I'm wondering if Bev, if you and Ace could be, uh, and, and myself can work on this letter, um, to incorporate both of the suggestions that you made, um, and get this ready to send to her. I'm happy to help. I just wonder whether Hannah, who's with us, uh, Gwen, who mm -hmm. works so hard on the trust stuff, uh, might not be part of that. I understand we can't have <laughs> above quorum, but yeah. But Ace, if, you, if you want me, I'm I'm happy to do work on it. Ace and then Richard. So we have few enough things on the agenda tonight that I would much rather do this now. Additionally, if we do this, you know, as a subcommittee, okay. I think we do still have to bring it back to the main committee, even if we didn't, the way timing works is we would definitely not get the mayor for January's meeting. Even if we did it tonight, I'm not even sure we'd get the mayor for January's meeting. Logistically, Carmen, if you wrote this, for example, in Google Docs, if you turned on editing permissions and mm -hmm. sent us the link to that, I mm -hmm. would be happy to take notes and edit as we go with that so that we could get this done. Um, I just don't think I can do that, Ace, because that's on another computer. That letter is on another computer. I'm on an iPad. I just, I just, I just can't do that. Okay. Yeah. If I made a copy of it and live edited it and sent it out to everyone so you could see if the live edits, would that be acceptable? I mean, that's totally acceptable to me. What about other people? Yes. 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 We're having a couple of thumbs up. Would you do that? Sure. Okay. Richard, I know you had your hand up. Um, it was the alternate route of having a subcommittee. I think we could vote here to say this letter reflects generally the views and our aims and authorize a subcommittee to fine tune wording. And especially given that the letter itself is going to be public very quickly because it goes to the mayor, I don't think we'll run afoul of open meeting, but I'm not opposed to editing right now. I think 
I think if there's a share screen up there and we all get the language, that's just fine. Okay. Okay. I have made a draft of the document. I'm working on uh, the, the copying process made it a little strange, uh, so I'll be ready in a few minutes. Okay. Can I can I start editing this? Like or uh, should I be yes. commenting? You 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 should be able to make suggestions to the edits right now. Um oh yeah, okay. I see. And Ace, I made your co-host, uh, so if you want to share your screen, you're allowed to do that. Thanks. Uh, once in one moment, I will do that. Uh, okay, that should be shared successfully. So is the best way to do this then just to start at the top and go down or are people going to uh, just take turns um, letting me know what the suggestions are? We're t I'm I'm typing it into the document right now. Okay. Um. So, I uh, in in with regards to uh, I'm going to highlight the section. Um, the second home rule petition proposes transfer fees. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's inaccurate. Mm -hmm. uh the the change that i would suggest is basically uh saying that there is currently um laws going through the legislature to develop a home rule petition whose funds would go to a housing trust if one exists mm -hmm. and then flow into in addition as part of governor healy's plan she's proposed this as well that yeah. would also go into a housing trust that could this and then following that, talk about the the housing trust as, you know, something we want to reactivate in light of this information. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Are you going to change the wording on that, Ace? Uh, yes. Yes, I can okay. do that now and then we can uh, review it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ace, mm -hmm. um, in the first paragraph, um, I think where it says we are also following, um, I think that should begin a new paragraph. Gotcha. Yep. And um, I think it should say we continue to follow the home rule petition updates. Makes sense. Um, I'll bug you about the other ones in a minute. Gotcha.
Um, so that's the proposed change for, for paragraph yeah. mm -hmm. three. So I think going to the next paragraph then, um, Bev, you had some good suggestions for um, rewording um, some of the MHTF um, uh, information. Well, I, it, again, for me, it's how far into the weeds we want to go in this letter versus mm -hmm. uh, a presentation. I think based on, you know, looking at this now, um, there's probably not a lot to be said in the meeting about the first three paragraphs. Most of what we want to talk about is in the fourth paragraph. That's correct. Yes. Framed by uh, the first three. Yeah. Um, and so the question is, um, do we want to offer to elaborate on our thoughts as to why having an additional city funded managed resource for affordable housing would be a good thing? That was the fundamental notion that she rejected last time. Right. How can um, we, right, so how we, how we can talk about how the trust fund would make things better for the city of Northampton? Well, perhaps we say something like, we know that you um, are not convinced that uh, a barrier to production of more affordable housing in Northampton uh, or a significant barrier is the lack of local funding. Mm -hmm. Given that we have CPA and CWG and all that stuff, mm -hmm. we think that that needs to be explored further. We've thought about getting together with other stakeholders to 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 discuss, you know, the full range of barriers to the production of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't want to debate the issue in the letter with her, right? But right. at least saying that we think this is a very open issue and we'd like to involve people like Laura Baker in that discussion. Mm -hmm. And again, I, it's it's all about how much you want to say in the letter versus in the meeting. OK, I, I just it's pretty important that we have a, a fairly clear list of things that we see as important next steps towards answering mm -hmm. the question. Mm hmm. Yeah, Ace, I just kind of added an idea as she as you were speaking, Bev. We understand you are not convinced there is a significant barrier to building more affordable housing, yet we continue to believe this this can or we can keep these discussions open. I might say the city instead of you, but otherwise. Yeah. Um, uh, right, right, right. Yeah, the city. Yeah, I think that would be good. Yeah. The city is and I said we can keep these discussions instead of um continue to believe this can keep I would say we continue to believe we can keep these discussions open got it Um, in, in this portion here, in addition to yeah. the, as they arise, um, I personally, I would want to go into a little, uh, note of something along the lines of, um, uh, as a more flexible option than, um, stability. The... Well, stability? I mean, well, just before that, I, I said that it could develop a timely and nimble funding process. So, right. So I think that's, we can that do speaks to the flexibility. Should that come to fruition? Um, could develop a timely and nimble process. Delete that is just say, just say funding process responsive to development needs. That makes sense. I might also cut the should that come to fruition uh -huh. as like 
don't yeah. know if we need to say that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Sometimes I can be a little wordy, so. Does um, the last sentence in that paragraph need to be revised to say, we understand the city is not convinced that additional local funding or the absence of additional local funding is a significant barrier? That, that's the point that she objected to. And again, when we sit down with developers, we're going to hear about NIMBY and we're going to hear about lack of available land and we're going to hear about land prices and right, right on and on and on. Funding is one issue. Um, right. So, yeah, I also think that there that are right. sentence has to be changed. So we, we understand the city is not convinced there's a significant barrier to building more affordable housing. Um, well, I mean, the city is, it might be more accurate to say we understand the city is not convinced the Municipal Housing Trust Fund will aid in building more affordable housing. Something mm -hmm. like that. Would aid in getting affordable housing built in oh in building more affordable housing yeah okay Th then I mean the next part doesn't totally follow yet we continue to believe we can keep these discussions open I think that has to be worded a little differently hmm. city is not convincing me that MHT would aid in building Probably more we continue to believe that we should keep these discussions open uh, yes and we maybe also we would however given the recent bills we would like to reopen these discussions yeah and changes with the um because now it's the executive office of housing and living communities livable communities and there are a lot of shifts happening especially with the, the potential for the new bond bill and i think that would be good incentive to keep that open for federal funding to come in to that trust so i don't know how to keep that simple and concise on one page Oh, it does mention Governor Healy's bond bill up here. Mm -hmm. So we might want to just sort of take another look at that. Yes. I think it's two million now. Super. Possibly something more like that. Yes, I like that. I think that's very good. Okay. Okay. Can we consider this complete at this point? Does anybody else have a comment? Um, I would say here.
Yeah. Um, should we be saying January 8th at the top as well as the bottom, or is just the bottom sufficient? Bottom line up front. So if you're inviting her, just put a top. And I mean, you could reiterate here, but I would don't let her read the whole thing and then discover where it is, you know? Okay. Okay. I would add the time in the top then. Uh, just... Okay. So, um, all right. So I, I realized Jara Smith introduced himself um, through the chat. Um, and I don't, Jara, did you get yourself off of mute yet or not? I did. I okay. did. I was being, I was being foolish. I had not okay. accepted the record request but once okay. i did that i was able to yeah very good so um i'd like to um have you say a word so i just want to make sure that this um letter is finished um ace what do you think um i'm I, done i think so um okay motion to approve the letter is written i'll second that Okay, who? All right, very good. Bye. Uh, does anybody object? Okay, so this letter is going to go off to Mayor Shara. I wonder, Ace, um, could you send this around to all of us or at least to me? I'd like to have that final copy. Definitely. Um, okay. I, uh, I'll send the link to Keith and Keith can send it to everyone just so that okay. we're all doing things the way we should. Sounds good. All right, thank you so much. Um, so we'll see um, what the response is, and I expect that we'll get a response, whether the mayor will come in person or not remains to be seen, but I think a letter was a really good idea, and um, thank you for everybody for polishing it up. Um, I wanna, so Jerry, I wanna go back to you for a moment. Um, can you say a few words about who you are and what you do. And we're very happy to have you here from the sentence that you already gave us in the chat. So go ahead. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. So um, I am, I'm originally from Western Mass. I grew up in Franklin County, um, but uh, went to college, lived in DC, Philadelphia, California for a while, but moved back um, like many millennials during the pandemic. Uh, and I've been a Northampton resident since October, 2020. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. Um, and so I am a, uh, I'm a professional affordable housing consultant. I work for a company called Enterprise Community Partners. Um, it's very simple, similar to the community builders in that um, there's branches that both develop um, property manage and finance affordable housing development. Um, I am not coming to you as the program director of equitable housing solutions for enterprise, but just as Jarrah Smith in Northampton a uh, community resident who happens to have a lot of knowledge about this particular subject and passion for this particular subject. So uh, I've been, as Keith can attest, I've been trying to join one of these meetings for the last like three months, but I have a toddler. And every time that a meeting comes up, I've had to miss it because he's been sick or otherwise demanded my attention. Um, so I'm really happy to be here tonight. Really excited to be hearing all of you talking about the housing bond bill, because of course that's huge. Um, just to put my cards on the table, I am a fan of trust funds, uh, and I'm happy to help um, talk about that uh, at some point. Uh, I'll, I'll stop there. I'm, I'm very excited to be here, very excited to be meeting all of you, and uh, excited to see that you're all taking advantage of the upcoming $4 billion coming statewide. So thank you for having me. Great. Well, thank, thank you for being here. Thanks, uh, Jarek. Yeah. I think that your thoughts um, and any comments that you have are going to be really useful. Now, you're here as an observer, right? You didn't apply to be on the housing partnership, at least not yet. I have not yet. I figured I should at least attend a meeting or two and also just make sure that I can actually commit to come to these on a regular basis and not need to then wait four months for my next meeting. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, right now I'm just an observer. So, you know, if all goes according to plan, I would certainly love to apply. Great. Okay. So let us go on to the next agenda item, which um, is flowing right from the last one. Um, 
planning. Uh, oh, two things. Well, I mean, I think actually goals for next year is kind of the headline here. Um, one of the things we wanted to do and have been talking about has been to convene a meeting of developers so that they can share with us what some of the impediments are to their participating in more building of affordable housing. Um, so I think that under that uh, headline of goals for next year, these things are gonna come into play. Um, we've often done a goal setting uh, um, session, you know, in December, January. Um, I think that's what uh, the um, Housing Trust Fund has been big on our discussions for the past few months. Um, this idea, um, Richard, I, I know you've talked about it and Bev, you have too, of getting, um, getting a meeting with developers. This is something that we can, we can um, set ourselves the task of doing. But I wanted to open the discussion up to others and see what you think um, you would like to work on over this coming year. Gwen. So one thing I've been thinking about um, is, you know, I mean, we probably are going to have somewhat of a a lot of more affordable housing going in. And I know that one thing that came up, and I'm so sorry for the noise in the background, um, is um, it, one thing that always comes up and, I, and I've been attending like, you know, different meetings, like planning meetings, sustainability meetings and things like that. And I'm always interested in like, generally like, um, I guess like, uh, you know, wanting to know like what some of the developers are thinking and or even like some of the designers are thinking in terms of like um uh climate you know and making houses like as passive as possible maybe or something like that and why does that have to cost more money and you know like the whole thing there you know because we are gonna have um, a lot of, you know, maybe some traffic changes and different things like that changing. And I guess that part of it, I guess maybe, you know, we have a new climate committee um, in the city and maybe we could connect with them and see what they're thinking. And um, so maybe for the next year, that could be a thing. Um, yeah. So those are just some of my thoughts. Thanks, Gwen. Uh, Ace? Um is there a place where we're uh, tracking completion of the action plan that was part of the um, uh, barriers to opportunity document from uh, 2019? Um, I know that we've pulled goals from that in the past um, mm -hmm. and, you know, seeing, seeing what, ones uh either have been met or um some things that are probably ongoing ones uh i'm noticing one that's you know host a meet and greet landlord tenant day is probably something that could stand to happen again mm -hmm. uh, Ace, i was tracking it but i haven't updated it in a while so it probably needs some love before it's shared again uh but yeah i could definitely do that i have a question are you referring to the unlock fair housing opportunities study such a great study and really on and i would love to keep working on that um i think there's more to be done there um keith were you keeping uh were you keeping at one point a chart or an updated list of some of the things that we've accomplished from that fair housing report? Yeah, like I said, I, I did created it. Uh, and like I said, I haven't updated it in a little while. So I need to go back and just kind of. Okay. Yeah. You know. I'm wondering um, okay, so nobody else has their hand up. Richard? Yeah. Um, it I just want to sort of speak generally about what I think might be on the horizon for impediments. It seems to me that the big ones are money and land 
and to a lesser degree zoning. So in terms of goals and focus, I think the Affordable Housing Trust Fund is a really important one because I think that's one potential source to get some additional funding. And funding is really what's going to der derive affordable housing. The one thing that we haven't done in a long time is to revisit some of the city parcels and see if we can't reimagine in the light of new zoning uh, ways to use them. I, I've always felt like the Oak Street parcel that the city has, but I'm sure there are others might be reimagined for affordable housing. And then also there's been a lot of current press about accessory dwelling units. And I know we've had some improvements to our code, but it really hasn't gotten as much traction as it might. And I, I'm wondering if we might want to revisit either if there are, we talked to developers about whether there's impediments in the accessory dwelling ordinance or whether that could be promoted because that's smart infill. So those are things that I would suggest we talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, and, Carmen? Yes, Steph. Um, I, I don't get to call myself a newcomer any, any longer, I guess. Um, no, you, no, but you I can't. will confess to still being, um, I don't mean this in a critical sense. Uh, certainly Keith nor anyone else should take it that way. But it feels to me, as I wander around talking to people, that a big problem is that um, th there is so much splintering in what happens in Northampton. There are people who think nonstop about economic development and what's going to happen on Main Street. There are people who obviously think about housing. There are people who think about public housing. And then there are other people who think about homelessness and people who think about rental and people who think about home ownership. Um, the, the, the places that I've worked in where it has felt the most friendly to uh, particularly mission-oriented developers are those places where all the, all the people, all the organizations, all the city departments who touch these issues are working from a, a common plan, a common sense of A, what the barriers are and B, what they're gonna do about them. Mm -hmm. And you know, saying that we wanna be about helping create that to the extent it doesn't exist and perhaps it does, um, is a pretty ambitious uh, goal. But in the absence of that, um, I feel kind of like, are we really going to be able to move any of these needles? Does this make any sense to anybody else? Yes. I mean, one of the things that I have said consistently over the past number of months have been that I feel like, you know, Northampton is kind of situated in these silos. You know, here's one department, here's another department, and here's us, the housing partnership, kind of without really any authority and really no official responsibility trying to trying to create something that would help the city move forward and with no with not much input from the city either which is of course one of the reasons we really want to get mayor shara in 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 for a discussion um but yes i mean i think it would be great to have a round table meeting so that we're not so siloed like this I have the, some of the same thoughts as you and some of the same worries as you, you know. I, um, I guess that's part of the reason that um, at least some of us thought, not that developers have all the answers, they certainly don't, they come from a perspective, but you know, to the extent that a series of conversations could be facilitated by us, um, we could then be in a position to at least say, this is what we're hearing. This is what we're hearing. This is what we're seeing. This is what we are in our various roles experiencing. And right. therefore, we're going to make it our business to advocate for uh, a limited number of changes in these areas. And so it's kind of hard to say what our 2024 uh, agenda is until we can fill in some of those blanks. And, you know, mm -hmm. maybe Richard and others who have been here longer have a clear sense of what you know, the priority should be, but I, 
I don't. Mm -hmm. Gwen? I, I just want to say that I agree with Bev. You know, it's like... Totally. It is like there is a lot of splintering. Um, you know, all kinds of housing is needed. All kinds of updating is needed. Um, you know, there are so many different needs in relation to housing in the city. Um, you know, some people, you know, support a housing first approach. And so then that means some other things are going to slide. And so I think that's kind of sort of like in terms of the realm between you know, housing homeless people, and then also considering the adjustment within that community where that person goes, and for that person to have that kind of support, that's like a whole nother element of housing in Northampton, right? Yeah. So, you know, those, that can be sort of uh, in congruent with the idea that we need mid-grade housing or whatever. And I think all of us here are all come from different um uh compartments you know of the city and so we hear firsthand like what we're we observe these things whatever we're observing you know um within that you know richard comes from the landlord side and keith comes from the planning and sustainability side and so um i think like maybe we should just put our ideas into a hat and then also i like the idea of what bev is talking about like should we invite like different stakeholders and, and say, you know, what do you see as, you know, from your, from your, uh, you know, and this could be for anyone, you know, what do you see as a priority? Um, you know, how can we support that? You know, um, can we support that? Are we able to, we don't have any authority, but is it like, attending more legislative hearings? Is it is it like speaking out for a specific bill? And, you know, I always hear Joe, I recently heard Joe Comerford talking um, in, I think it's community services, committee services meeting. She wants to hear from people. So, um, you know, just different things like that. So like those general type stuff like following these bills and what's going on and are there hearings coming up I think that would be like an ongoing thing and you know so oh, I think that yeah I think everything you're saying which follows what Bev says makes sense I think that back to what you mentioned Bev around getting our discussions about getting developers to um you know weigh in and tell us what are the obstacles I mean I, I think that's part of our you know exploring Aside from getting feedback from Laura Baker, who's many times said to us, no, there's never enough money, right, Laura? And but but also from other people to bolster the idea that maybe we could <laughs> we could um, offer a municipal housing trust fund as something that the city would then find a good adjunct. Um, and so the question is how to go about doing that. I agree. It feels like we're working in silos. We're a volunteer committee. We have no authority. We don't, we're not sure what our responsibilities are. And so that's that's one of the reasons, again, that we wanna have the mayor come in, especially because we're honing in on the trust fund and other ways that we can um, assemble um, certain community people to get feedback, right? Um, okay. Uh, can I speak? Yes, Richard, please, please. So uh, a little historical context. When our uh, board was first formed, the original enabling ordinance essentially said that we were supposed to be the coordinating entity within city government. And that even though we did not have, you know, a quasi judicial or a regulatory function, all matters that affected affordable housing were supposed to be referred to the housing partnership for our input. And that was in recognition that it was an important goal and that many things that people might, you know, parking or uh, building um, enforcement or any one of a number of things could affect affordable housing. And that piece was stripped out of the legislation when it was streamlined some years back, but 
but the principle we can refer to and we can advocate for. And I think we also, I, I, there was that recent meeting where we tried, or where the city tried to get a citizen group to advocate for housing, which is a desirable goal. But I think it's important that if the city is going to push for that, that that effort be coordinated with us because it, otherwise you're we're just fracturing the efforts of our common goal mm -hmm. um i want to ask you jara at this point coming from your position and with your knowledge base, how do you think, just in brief, how do you think that the bond bill and Governor Healy's housing plan that's been proposed, how do you think that that might uh, change or transform what municipalities like Northampton have to work with? You know, I will have a much smarter answer after next Friday when I'm going to a briefing on it. Um, I work all across the country and actually I only have, I've just started working in Pittsfield, which has been great, but it's my first community that I've been working with in Massachusetts. So I'm a little behind on the housing bond bill itself. But what I can say is that, I mean, it sounds like it's got a lot of different, you know, it's got $4 billion in grants and like financing programs, the expansion of the community investment tax credits and this new home ownership tax credit that I need to learn about. I mean, I'm sure that has got to help at least some folks. Um, and I haven't looked into many of the executive orders or policies yet, but what I can say is, you know, a $4 billion bond for housing is very significant and not something that happens in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. um, I think that like usual, Western Mass is going to have a difficult time advocating over the interests of Eastern Massachusetts. Um, obviously, one of the greatest challenges that we face uh, in Western Mass is that it costs just as much to build housing here um, as it does in Eastern Mass, but we get less return for investors. And so that's why if you're gonna build an affordable unit, why do it in Northampton or Pittsfield when you can do it in Arlington or you know Midway or whatever? Um, uh, so I know that I, I, I'm curious, you know, what all of your involvement is with the Western Mass, uh, housing coalition that I guess relatively recently formed. Um, I guess I'm, I'm rambling here a little bit, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is that I think it's going to be really important for Western Mass folks to rally together, um, and advocate for our financing needs because, um, otherwise it's all just going to go to Eastern Mass. But I think that, you know, uh, Northampton needs a lot. Like it's a beautiful town. We provide lots of fantastic services. Like it's a progressive place that's willing to help folks who have lower incomes and need housing and need extra social services. Um, you know, the interesting thing about Northampton is that it's a lot pricier than a lot of other places in Western Massachusetts. You know, like if you look at the Pittsfields or Northampton or North Adams, um, but then, of course, you know, you look at Great Barrington and it's very similar to Northampton in a lot of ways. So um, I plan to get a lot smarter on this particular bill and figure out how Western Mass communities in particular can take advantage of it. I would love to hear from you all, um, you know, what priority, you know, grant programs uh, you're aware of in the bill. I'd love to hear more about, you know, what you all think of it. But uh, I, I think it's a very big deal and something that... Um, people shouldn't sleep on. Thank, Not thank that I you. think any of you are, certainly. <laughs> yeah. Laura? Since I'm here. Um, <laughs> so I've heard a couple of things people have said tonight that have really resonated in terms of our work uh, at Valley Developing Housing. Um, I, well, I think the bond bill is massive four billion dollars is about what two billion dollars was five years ago so it's it's i think people even i have trouble 
getting my head around the level of escalation that we've seen in the construction world and just how expensive it is to build any kind of housing, not just affordable housing. And the numbers are shocking. So when Richard says money, 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 there was a time when I thought money wasn't our biggest problem. I really felt like some of the zoning challenges, like if we could get it through permitting, we knew that there would be a path to raise sufficient resources to build it eventually. I don't really think that anymore. I think it's gotten so crazy expensive that the communities that have more local money to pledge are going to advance in ways that other communities won't be able. So they'll be stuck because the state has caps on its programs. Once you hit them, you're kind of like, ah, we maxed it out. Um, so I will say that the other thing um, specific to Western Mass, it, it's a little bit what, what Jara was saying is that um, rents are capped at a much lower level that we can charge as affordable housing developers. So if you don't know this, Jara, we're in the Springfield MSA, which means where our rents are tracking with basically the large population centers, Springfield and Holyoke in our region. Whereas Northampton and Amherst in particular have very high kind of micro communities where the rents are super high. So there's this huge disconnect between the rents that we can receive, but the cost of building the housing is very similar to Eastern Mass, but Eastern Mass developers might get two or three times the rent for their for the same one bedroom apartment. So that's creating a massive, it's always been a problem in Western Mass. It's a massive crunch. One of the potential solutions to that is a policy one. It's getting state, both HUD, which is a section eight and the state, uh, which is MRVPs to allow the use of what are called small, small market FMRs, fair market rents. So instead of being Northampton being glommed into a large region with artificially low kind of caps on rent, we could be in the 01060 or 01062 region and the rent levels, the compensation would be much higher for the rental subsidies. It wouldn't penalize the tenants who would still be paying about 30% of their income, but it would mean the state and federal government would co compensate landlords in a, in a different way. And that would be a huge driver for both private and nonprofit developers. We're getting creamed on operations. We really are. It's like you just, the escalation in utilities alone <laughs> is eating up any cash that might have come off properties. So that is something that's a policy advocacy position that a, something like the trust or the partnership could work on. Um, I think the nexus of climate resiliency, energy efficiency, and affordable housing is that's where it's at right now. Um, and I will give you an example. So Prospect Place, we're looking at doing a geothermal installation. There will be one of the first multifamily properties, affordable properties in Massachusetts to have geothermal. It might be the first. State just gave us $2.5 million just toward that because that combined with affordable housing, it's like that is where everybody's focus is right now. I almost feel like you can't be competitive as an affordable housing developer if you're not deploying some cutting edge energy efficiency technology, both in Northampton as a community and in the state of Massachusetts. So, yeah. Hey, Laura. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering um, if you could speak a little bit about um, tax credits in general and the extent to which that my observation is that cost is huge but you don't even get the opportunity to worry about how expensive it is if you can't get a tax credit allocation and to the extent that uh this you know the state and the person of kate racer says you you only get one a year um and to the extent that valley cdc is the player here you know, TCB occasionally does a deal, but we haven't done one in, or they haven't done one in a zillion years. Um, and, and it feels to me like increasing tax credits, whether they're the state version or the federal version, yep. is such a reasonably simple and leveraged way to get volume. Credits basically come from the loss of revenue to the government. So it's kind of disguised pain. No one realizes right. that because exactly. they don't ever collect the revenue. 
Um, they did just increase the state tax credit allocation. I believe yeah. the federal is a per capita number. So there's a big, and I think it went up a little while ago, but um, states that have a growing population are going to get more tax credits. And if we all advocate for that per capita amount to be increased, then it will be. Um, tax credits are the, the biggest tool that we have. Uh, they bring in the most equity to develop affordable housing. So it's a big deal. Um, I just went out with uh, a request for proposals. We got tax credits and then we went out to market them and did not have any takers right away. And part of it's the time of year. I know Bev's like, oh, <laughs> what next? <laughs> but some of it's the time of year. Some of it is the size of the development that we're working on. And some of it is what Joe was saying about, you know, Northampton's a strong housing market. But compared to Eastern Mass, it is not a strong housing market. And so when you have a large player like a bank or bank investing and they're covering the state, they're, they're going to be attracted to those high equity, you know, high asset areas. Um, so we'll resolve that problem, Beth. Beth, don't worry, we'll find someone. But it was a little bit of an eye opener for me that in a world where interest rates, excuse me, I've got a dog whining at me. Um, interest rates are high, there's not as much appetite for tax credit investors. And so it used to be you get the credits and you just throw up your hands and people rush at you with equity and it's not true anymore. So we're seeing lower pricing on tax credits and less interest at a time when construction costs are really ballooning. So the math is tough. As, as Richard was saying, the math is just getting really difficult. So, Carmen, you know, this is the conversation yeah. that we, we, we've we been talking about having, right, with, you know, a larger group, right? Yes, and and this is the kind of conversation we've been talking about having with the mayor, because these are all statements that really, really illustrate why, no, we don't have enough money now, and we, we need to do everything we can to get more, right? And if I could add one recent revelation to me, um, and I, again, Laura will nod because she apparently does nothing but zoom into um, public meetings with her evenings. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, the CPA uh, process for the first uh, round of, you know, because of the way the fiscal year works for the city, first round is in the winter. Um, uh, just concluded itself, and there was significant. There, all of the resources available for the entire funding year could have been allocated in the first round. There was a moment in time where I thought they might be, um, uh, the and that would have required that we bond, meaning borrow against future CPA to fund some of it. Um, the committee worked for uh, about 10 hours worth of meetings to figure out how to leave some money on the table for next round. Um, Valley CDC got funded. It was the only housing project that applied. And while I love seeing the local CDC have no competition, <laughs> there's something there that no one else is competing for resources for rental housing yeah. in the city on any regular basis. So, and if folks want to look at where the money is going, of, of the people who showed up to comment, we had Laura, 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 and 40 advocates for building pickleball courts. Oh, yeah, I heard about that meeting. I got nothing against pickleball. <laughs> but, <laughs> and the other two biggest requests were to fix up uh, City Hall and uh, the Academy of Music. And again, very important things. Um, but the, the, the point is, you know, to the extent that the theory is that CPA funding is, got, is enough to take care of affordable, local contribution to affordable housing. Um, there's something that makes me scratch my head when um, so little of it, quite frankly, is actually going to affordable housing. Can I make another counterpoint to Bev's comment? Um, Please. I, 
was at that CPA meeting and I was in tears because every member of the CPC unprompted talked about funding, in this case, 23 Laurel Street as their highest priority. Right. And that is different than my decades of experience in this field. So it tells me something is working, whether it's a uh, this committee kind of getting the word out or the newspapers are constantly publishing. I mean, it's a national crisis, right? Mm -hmm. National guard are being deployed in Massachusetts. So it's, you know, but the message has gotten through to the CPC committee. They were like, do you need more? <laughs> so they, they have an appetite and a hunger to, use CPA dollars to assist with the affordable housing crisis. So that is awesome. And we will certainly- Yeah, and a lot of the enthusiasm for making sure there was more money for next round is just hoping that yeah. more affordable would yeah. come in yeah. the door. We uh, I mean, we'll bring them something, but yeah. yeah. And I would say that we're not always alone, that that Wayfinders and yeah, that's true. housing- Occasionally Beacon, occasionally TCB. There's are, are some other players, and so it, but it's a little, it's a little random when they're ready to come in. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I would say um, I wasn't there in, in the live moment, but I I watched it later, and um, you know I would say like it was pretty cool um, to see um, such enthusiasm for housing. Um, but the other thing that I thought was interesting was on this ever evergreen thing, um, like the city just submitted like, um, you know, we want to have this space ready, but there's no not enough detail there. Like, what is it for? Like, is it specifically for affordable housing or like there just was not enough information about that. So. So there's some stuff like. I don't know, I was just more curious about than anything, but. Yeah, so. I think also um, back to what you said, Richard, a little while ago about you wondered about the Oak Street parcel. I think, Melissa, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the Oak Street parcel was on the August um, house uh, uh, planning meeting um, agenda or they had a neighborhood meeting in which they in which there was a lot of resistance. Can you clarify that? Um, I'm trying to remember what which parcel that is. I th think it's the parcel on Oak Street, right next to the bike path where Bartlett Street comes in, I think. Right? Yeah. It, there's like a triangle of land there. Anyway, it's neither here nor there, but I was just yeah. I I mean is... evergreen. Yes, I I re, I got that. Just just I can't. Yeah, I, it's not okay. going to be that one. All right. Anyway, so this is a good discussion. I I feel uh, sort of. I think if the mayor comes to our January meeting, that we will be able to have a well-rounded discussion and come out of that with a sense of what what we need to do because we don't know what she's going to say we don't know you know no municipal housing trust go ahead and explore it etc um i feel a little uh, uncertain about some of the goals without that conversation with her but I think we have explored other things here over the past few months, like a meeting with, um, you know, convocation of regional developers to ask them, what are the roadblocks here that I think would be a really useful thing to pursue? Carmen, is it you um, your thought that we uh, basically, um, let her speak to us, uh, assuming January is when we actually get to see her? Or do you think we need a, a subcommittee to put together a more refined agenda than what we have right now? Well, I think it can't hurt to have a little bit more of a refined agenda. Um, so 
I'm not sure when we're going to know. I mean, Keith, we can get this letter to her soon, right? I mean, this should go from your office to her office. Yeah. Okay. So we should we should know fairly fairly soon if she's going to be able to make that or not. And I think if people want to do a subcommittee, Bev, other folks who who have some specific ideas about that and just get our thoughts together better. I think that would be worthwhile. Um, I don't feel the need to meet any more than anyone else does. And we have the holidays coming up, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I think she will assume that we're going to tell her uh, what we've been up to and what we uh, um, need from her or need to talk with her about. And I just want to make sure we're prepared to, you know, have clarity about that. Well, I think the letter does in that last paragraph spell out that we are um, wondering where she stands in terms of us continuing to research this. And so I think we'll have a chance to talk to her more okay. about this. Maybe that's yeah. enough. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, let's hope she she can join us. Let's hope so. And if she she doesn't, I hope we get some feedback from her and that can sort of go on that. All right, so Keith, you're going to re, redo or kind of um, um, uh, uh, in a revise uh, the list of goals, et cetera, that we've had, right? Yeah, I'll just update them and put them in a format that's semi-legible. Yeah. Can you, is that something you can send out to us then? Yeah, to, sometime okay. next week, yeah, this week. All right. So I think we're gonna invite the mayor January 8th. We don't know yet if she's coming. She may, she may not give us feedback and we're gonna get the revised goals list and think about that. So I'm not, sure that we can do much more on goals, et cetera, tonight. Um, I think that should be part of our January discussion. What do other people think? Good, okay. Um, all right. So does anybody else, I mean, we're, we're just about on new business, but anybody else want to say anything else about that plan so our plan is to continue this give a letter do some planning and this discussion with her hopefully in january and then go from there all right any new business not new business but just an update about the oak street um so mm -hmm. the oak street parcel we had a neighborhood meeting um, I sent that out to um, the neighborhood, um, and yeah, they were pretty apprehensive. They had some really good comments, and um, kind of uh, just kind of took those comments into consideration and trying to make a, a good design that works for them and think about things um, that they had concerns about. But you know, in the spring, we hope to have another meeting, and we'll have, to have you guys there. Um, uh, I'll update you, but as of right now, it's um, the Cook Avenue parcel that Habitat is moving forward. That's more of a priority just because um, um, there's actually a developer, um, but Oak Street, um, it's not being dropped, but it's just a lower priority for getting uh, mm. getting housing there. So Okay. Very good. All right, everybody. I think we've come to the end of our business. Jara, thank you very much for being here with us tonight. Laura, thank you very much. Everybody else, thank you so much. And um, can I have a motion to um, adjourn the meeting? Uh, so move and happy holidays to everybody. Second. Second and same. All right. Same. And same. Holidays. Same, everybody. Thank you so much.